So in this video, I'll show you how to make a 5.8 gigahertz FPV antenna. I know there's dozens of uh, videos out there on making FPV antennas. So I designed this in Fusion 360, and I designed it so the wire is supported by the side of the uh, antenna, unlike this one where this could get crushed or bent or detuned basically over time when you throw it in your backpack or whatever. I mean, it, it takes a lot of force, but even putting this wire in, I broke this little part right there on that. So this only has maybe half a millimeter of uh, support right here, and it's already broken when I was trying to assemble this. This one has about maybe two or three millimeters supporting this on the smallest side and it gets wider and stronger. So you can throw this in your backpack or your carrying case and your wire will not get beat up and moved off to the side and detune your FPV antenna. With this antenna, you'll have to drill the holes out. This is a 2.6 millimeter drill bit kind of angle it to uh, go along with the uh, recess in it and this is printed in ABS so once you have it printed out you can take a spray bottle full of acetone and just spray it to smooth everything out. And you let that dry for 10 or 15 minutes and you have a nice glossy strong finish. This actually will strengthen it because it takes the layers and kind of bonds it together. It kind of melts the very outside. So I have a 16 gauge wire from Lowe's. This was uh, about nine and a half dollars for this entire roll. You'll make a couple dozen FPV antennas out of this. So I'll need about 315 millimeters of wire for this antenna. Take a block of wood and uh, run it back and forth. Once you have your wire straightened out, bend about two millimeters at a 90 degree angle. So it looks like that. I also made a wire twisting uh, template. Take a pair of pliers and just grab the end and just kind of curl this around. Doesn't take a lot of force, but it's easier with a pair of pliers. Take a screwdriver, pry this 90 degree bend out of the hole, and then you should be able to take a pair of needle nose and maybe. <laughs> spin this uh, guide, the wire twisting guide out from the middle of the wire. Take a pair of wire cutters and cut off the 90 degree angle on the end of the wire. Then take the center of your FPV antenna and carefully twist the wire in. You may need to guide it with your thumb into the holes. I drilled these holes out at 2.6 millimeter. If you're having trouble getting the wire fed into these, you may need to drill the holes bigger at maybe 2.8 or even 3 millimeter. But uh, if the surface of your ABS is nice and smooth, then it should slip right in there. You can take a pair of needle nose and feed it in, feed it through the holes. And you see the end of this goes right up to the end of that. And then you have about two millimeter left over from uh, where you're gonna solder your RJ 
402 cable on. Just take a pair of pliers and push that down. Take a pair of cutters and see this little divot in the print? That's where your RJ402 cable will go. Kind of cut that. So it's even. One end of the wire is right up against the support on the center of the FPV antenna, and the other end is where this little recess is. And to cut the back plate of the FPV antenna, I have this 38 millimeter diamond saw. I have this uh, 22 gauge sheet metal from Lowe's. Spray a bit of oil on here. file and clean this burr off because it has a very sharp burr on the edge of this. And then I'm just cleaning up the edges with a file. So I have a uh, one to one scale copy of the antenna printed out on a uh, eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. I'm, I need this back plate uh, template to drill the hole. So I sprayed Super 77 on the back of this a few minutes ago, letting it dry. And you see here, you can barely see the circle. So slide a piece of uh, white paper underneath, and that really makes the circle where the print on the front pop out. See, you can't see it, you can see it. So take the uh, piece that you cut out earlier and put it in the circle, get it aligned as best you can. Crush it down, flip it over, take a nail or a center punch and line it up and just make a uh, divot in that metal. You see that there's now a divot there. And that's where your drill bit will go. And you can throw this away. So you'll want a drill bit that is the size of this metal sheathing and that's about three and a half millimeters to drill this, to drill the hole in this. Then take some uh, isopropyl alcohol and uh, clean off any oils. I also sanded this down on a 150 grit sandpaper to rough it up to let the uh, solder stick and, and the glue when you glue the tower on. Tin the end of the wire here, or your coax. And the solder may make it a little hard to get it on, but you can spin it around and force it on there. Put it back in your helping hands. and. Touch your soldering iron to the end and push. You may have some solder on the outside which you can file off or reheat and try to get it off. Probably better just to file it down. Then I put the connector on there and soldering this on there. It takes quite a bit of heat to get the solder to flow on both surfaces. And let that cool. That made a very nice solder joint on that connector. Take a cloth with some uh, rubbing alcohol on it and get any flux off. So I have some uh, 3 16 inch heat shrink insulation. I'm going to use about half of this. Take a heat gun.
and then shrink the uh, heat shrink down over the uh, coax cable. So the length of your conduit does matter. At 5.8 gigahertz, one wavelength is 51.7 millimeters. And if you want it shorter or longer, it's best to go a quarter wavelength at a time. And a quarter wavelength at 5.8 gigahertz is 25.85 millimeter. Just cutting it randomly is not 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 a uh, uh, good practice because it throws off your uh, impedance and it's not a good match to your antenna. It probably would have been best if I cut this when uh, I had this off because that would be easier to line up. So I'm just trying to line the uh, end up here and go 51.7 millimeters. You can always go longer a little bit and trim it off. And I need about two to three millimeters of center wire on this coax. So I'm going to align this. So I have my coaxial cutter and line this up and turn it. And that just uh, is about perfect for what I need. So it helps to put some uh, flux on your metal and pre-tin this before you put your cable in. Just help things flow a little better. This is a large piece of metal to solder on, so it's going to take a little bit of heat to get this thing going. Flip it over and do the other side. Then I use the other half of the insulation and slip that down as far as it'll go and uh, hopefully it'll uh, not shrink on me. I then use my helping hands to hold the plate and line it up so the coax is even with the top of this plate like that and apply solder to the edge. Try not to make a bridge between the outer shell of the coax and the inner wire. And if you did this correctly then you won't even have to solder the back side of this. And while it's still warm you can push this up, push the uh, insulation up and then heat shrink that. It'll probably heat shrink on its own it's still warm but the center wire of the coax should be long enough to solder to this but first I want to clean this plate off again it has all kinds of flux and take this uh, bump of solder off with the file so we can glue this on there take some sandpaper and rough this surface up so your glue sticks nicely now it's all roughed up and uh, clean it off with some more alcohol and a rag. And you can even clean the base of this off with some rubbing alcohol. Don't use acetone if you print it in ABS. And I'm using E6000 glue. Apply a bunch of glue to the base of this. Then line this the end of the wire up with your little coaxial nub right there and try to center the antenna the best you can. For the glue sets make sure this wire and the end of your coax are close enough to be soldered together and also make sure that this wire it's not touching the base plate. And then let it dry overnight. So it's the next day and the E6000 is nice and dry and I will uh, try to solder this on there without 
frying the plastic. I'm going to put a little flux on here. So what I'm doing here is seeing if the back plate and this center wire has any continuity between it. Just to make sure it's not shorted out. Here is my 5.8 gigahertz uh, five turn right hand circularly polarized antenna that I 3D printed. Now I want to hook it up to an SWR meter because I also have one of those and I'm going to see how it stands up. 